بيرس و ار مور تريكي ذان سوبرا كوندايلر فراكشر هيومرس سو وي هاف تو بي فيري اوير اباوت ذا بريزنس اوف ساتش فراكشر اند هاو تو مانج ات Well, uh, the fracture lateral condyle, it accounts for about 15% of the fracture around the elbow, and it's uh, the sec second most common after supracondylar fracture, and the age group, is, uh, the average is about six years. And why it's important? Because, uh, as we said, it's a physial injury, and it's an intra-articular fracture. Uh, Milch classified uh, on 1946 into two types, and this uh, is based upon the mechanic of fracture, type one, which is rare, and it's due to chair or impaction force, and it's considered as solder hearts type four, while uh, type two is more common, and it's due to um, avulsion uh, from the uh, lateral collateral ligament and the common extensor uh, origin of the Uh, forearm, and it's considered to be a Salter Harris type 2. Other classification, Jacob in 1975, uh, uh, defined it into three stages. The first stage, just on the lateral side here, about less than two millimeter. The second type goes until the articular surface complete, to about less than two millimeter, while the third type is more than two millimeters, and it's with rotation. So the first and the second types of uh, Jacob classification are considered to minimally displaced and uh, more or less more stable than type three, which is the displaced type. So, uh, as I said, it's uh, stable because the first type, there is an intact articular cartilage, while the complete one is considered to be unstable. Uh, type two, Uh, there is an incidence of less than 50% later displacement. So we have to be aware about this in the modality of treatment. And then came Song in 2008 and this, uh, divided this fracture into five types. Uh, stage one, which is less than two millimeter and limited fracture, and it's a stable one. While type two is uh, more and um, uh, uh, more uh, with a lateral gap of two millimeter, while type three is the complete one, and also it's about two millimeter equal on the medial and the, the, on the lateral and the medial side. Type four is more than two millimeter, but without rotation, and type five is more than four millimeter and uh, more than two millimeter and with rotation. You should be aware about the X-ray position. As we see here, it's, we, if we see it, we can consider it as type one or type two, but we have to do an internal oblique and it shows that according to Jacob it's type 3 and according to Sung it's type 4, more than 2 millimeter here. So it's very important to um, do an X-ray in internal rotation to judge about the type and of this fracture. Here also on the AP and then on the internal oblique view. Here is type five with complete rotation on the AP, on the lateral side. So sometimes it's hard to tell if the fracture extends to the articular surface. So we have other modalities as the ultrasound and the MRI. And sometimes fractures that are less than two millimeter as type three can displace. As I said, MRI and ultrasonic are a better way to evaluate The, the fracture, but it needs a sedation for the children and it's more costly. So what is the treatment of such fractures? So if we have a gap less than two millimeter, type one, type two, we can go on a cast and we follow, uh, and we need to follow up this patient every week by an X-ray and until six weeks. The average uh, uh, immobilization are six weeks in a cast. Well, if we have more than two millimeter, like type three, four, or five, we think about surgery, either closed percutaneous spinning or open reduction internal fixation. So for the closed reduction internal fixation, 
in the non-displaced if we are concerned about the ability for follow-up and the compliance of the parents to come every week to do an X-ray and if the displacement is more than two millimeter within the first 24 hours. We do it, we put uh, the elbow in hyperflexion and pronation and then we go percutaneously with the K-wires. The open reduction is indicated for displaced uh, rotated fractures so because they are unstable fracture, we go on through a lateral approach to uh, open and reduce. We should be aware about that uh, in reduction. If, if here there is no rotation, we can go on like here by two K wires, one transverse and one longitudinal. And if there is a rotation, so we can go on by more, by more than two wires to, uh, to be sure that we have stabilize this rotated uh, fragment. Some uh, concern we have, we can use a sterile tourniquet. We should uh, always be anterior and not go posterior to be away from the blood supply, so not to have an avascular necrosis. We open the anterior. <laughs> We go on, we open the anterior capsule and we have to see the, the articular surface to be sure that we have reduced the intraarticular fracture and then we go on and fix it with the pins. There are a lot of complications concerning this fracture, that's why we have to be very aware about this type of fracture, the late union more than um, um, less than 12 weeks, more than 12 weeks in non-union, AVN, malunion, physial arrest. Uh, as Professor Yahya said, it's very common uh, to have a periosteal newborn formation with lateral spur, angular deformities, cubitus valgus, and uh, then tardial ulnar nerve, myositis ossificans, and stiffness. So complications are much more, more than the supracondylar fracture. So we have to take care about this. The late union, here is a case, eight weeks, and then uh, we, the, the patient didn't complain too much. He, he was about eight years old, and he fell on his elbow, and he came with this here, and then it has been stabilized with a screw. Non-union is a, a problematic, well, either to approach it, how to are going to approach it with a graft, and then usually, it ends like this, uh, uh, cubitus uh, valgus with ununited fracture. Uh, this uh, was uh, what's saying uh, Dr. Yahya with the lateral condylar overgrowth. Here is the uh, physial arrest with the f fishtail deformity. So this fracture has a significant risk of problems if maltreated and we, have, we should be aware about how to treat it, one to treat it, and uh, to prevent functional impairment. Thank you very much.